Hello everyone. Um, in this, with this episode, I am going to start a new chapter, which is public goods. Um, <clears throat> so here are the four uh, key concepts, key words for this chapter. Well, first of all, and obviously, um, what we mean by public goods. So I'm going to give a very brief definition uh, in this video. And then in the next videos, I'll talk about uh, the concept which is called reservation price. So what it means and how it is calculated is important part of public goods. Um, and the reason why we talk about reservation price is mainly because uh, sometimes providing the public good may not be efficient, meaning the agents, the consumers may actually prefer to have the public good, but the, well, the, the public good is not free, so it costs something. And so given the costs and the benefit, uh, it may be inefficient to provide the public good, meaning it may be efficient to not to provide the public good. And so we're going to talk about the efficiency. And when we talk about efficiency of public good reservation price, plays an important role. Uh, well, I will talk about all these through, um, you know, some simple and basic models, but they're going to be pretty uh, uh, generic. I mean, we can apply the same ideas and approach almost all the problems uh, that you may face when it comes to public goods. And then finally, we're going to talk about public good provision. So luckily, most of the times the governments intervene and they provide the public good. And uh, well, how do they finance? Through our taxes. So we pay tax and so the government collects those taxes and spends uh, some of those money to provide some of the public goods. But sometimes uh, the, the governments do not provide the public good, probably because it's uh, not in, in, in their priority list. And so in those instances, the community, the, the agents, the consumers, the people in that neighborhood or in that area, region, um, should step in and, and basically, um, you know, put some money into that uh, a public good project. And so then the question is, who is going to provide, uh, uh, who is going to contribute how much for the financing of this public good? And what are the mechanisms to determine who is going to provide and who is not going to provide? All right, so again, we're going to talk about several um, examples. And, and, and um, that's going to be it. All right. So let's start with public goods. I'll continue in the next episode with the reservation price efficiency and a model uh, where we discuss those concepts in much, in, in much detail. Well, the public goods is basically a kind of goods where um, one, um, everyone, all the consumers, all the agents in the society can uh, consume um, the same amount as much as they want to, all right, and as long as they want to. So you can't, uh, sort of one important um, characteristics of public good is that um, the consumption of a public good by some agents are not going to diminish the, uh, the, the, the good itself, all right? So what do I mean by this? So think about um, a consumption good such as a apple, all right, or a hamburger, all right, or, or, or a, a, a can of Coke. So these are consumption goods. You can consume, you can drink, you can eat those goods. And the thing is, if I eat or drink those goods, it means it's, it, they're, these goods are going to deplish. I, I mean, they're, they're going to decrease uh, in, in size, in quantity, whatever. And so another consumer... Uh, may not consume the same size, same unit uh, that I am consuming, all right? However, uh, in many public goods, this is not the case. Um, examples are probably the, uh, the, the, the most useful um, uh, way of understanding public goods. Um, you can think about the hospitals, public hospitals, schools, public schools, universities, public universities, um, highways, um, you know, uh, uh, dams, um, the electric uh, producing facilities like uh, uh, nuclear power plants. So all those usually are public parks, all right, roads, sideways, etc. So these are all uh, public goods, all right. So if um, you consume the public good, say it's park, 
meaning you take your, 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 your kids or yourself to the park and enjoy the nice weather, but it doesn't mean that other people can't enjoy it the same level as you do, all right? Well, obviously, uh, there's a bit of, um, you know, a, a vagueness in, in, in incorporated there. It's like, well, imagine this is a park, uh, say, I don't know, Central Park in New York, it's, it's a huge park, yes, but if you try to put, say, 100,000 people into that park at the same time, at the same day, well, obviously, people are not going to be enjoy the park as much as they like, right? But nevertheless, um, you, you, I, hopefully, I, I hope that you understand the main idea. It's like your consumption is not diminish uh, the value, the, the quantity, the... the, the, the the, the, the existence of that, of that good, all right? So those are type of goods that uh, we, we call uh, public goods. Well, what happens is that um, different people have different valuations for the public good, right? You, for example, may um, love public schools, but you know, another person may be against public schools. And so uh, you know, one agent may actually give a very huge value for the existence of public school near to their house. But another person who doesn't have any kids, for example, doesn't really care about whether there is a public school next to my home or not. All right. Or if we're talking about a hospital, well, usually people do care about the existence of a hospital nearby, but probably, uh, you know, some people care more about others. And so when I say some people care more about than the others, we basically mean that, that they have higher uh, utility when they consume this good. All right. So think it that way. So they have stronger preferences for the existence of public goods. By the way, I forgot to say one thing when I was talking about public goods, and I think it is important. So public goods, not always, but usually like zero one, uh, the, the consumption of public goods are usually, uh, not always, are usually zero one kind of decision. You either consume the public good or not, all right? So you either go to park or you don't. You either use the hospital or you don't. All right. So if you, um, um, so if, if there is a, a, a public good, a, a public library, you either use the public a public library or not. All right. So usually, again, it's like obviously you can say, oh well, some some person may actually use the public library, that public good, every single day. Another person may use the same public good once a month or even once a year, right? So, I mean, it may be not, not, not a binary decision like zero one, but um, for simplicity in, in this course, we are going to assume that the public good consumptions are, you know, usually zero one decisions. Um, we may, I'm not sure if I have any example when the uh, decision is not binary, uh, but if there is, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of highlight uh, that difference. So as I said, uh, different people may value public good differently. And so um, usually the idea is that, well, if the government is not going to provide the uh, or finance the cost of the public good, well, then who should? Well, the people who are going to use that public good should contribute and, and finance the public good, right? Well, but how much? It's like, should I contribute or should I pay uh, sort of cover the same amount of cost that you pay it? Uh, well, there's going to be a lot of discussion like, well, I mean, I do like this public good, but you know what? Not as much as you like. So maybe if you're valuing this public good so highly, maybe you should contribute more than I do. You see what I mean? So uh, it's a, it's a de debate. There is no clear, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to who is going to provide how much of its the, the public goods cost. So the public good provision is, 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 a, is a very interesting question. And we will talk about some game theoretical examples and models. And in fact, uh, we will also talk about free writing. The concept which basically uh, we face a lot is like, well, given that the others are already contributing, um, yes, I do really want that public good, but given that the others are contributing, maybe I shouldn't contribute. And, and it's like, so, well, 
you can think of like why contributing is not bad. I mean, is, is bad? Well, because contributing, so there's, remember, economics is a science of trade-offs, right? So if you contribute f towards public good, meaning you spend money on uh, public good, uh, well, it means basically you spend less money on your other consumptions, which we call it like private consumption, all right? So other than using this public good, you may enjoy going out for dinner, going to a cinema or, you know, having a Netflix, whatever. And so the problem is if you contribute too much of your income or, or money on public good, that means less of money for private consumption. All right, so there's a trade-off. I want this public good, public good to be there, all right? I enjoy its existence. Uh, but the thing is, I don't wanna pay too much because I actually, in fact, I, I prefer not to pay anything. Right, and then I spend all my uh, money for my own uh, personal consumption. But the thing is, somebody has to pay for that. And so who is this? Well, it's us. So then usually the public good provision uh, problems becomes a, a coordination problem. Are we going to be able to coordinate and finance this public good or not? Well, obviously, uh, it may not always be uh, uh, the, the, the most reasonable way to uh, the alternative or outcome to provide the public good. So the efficiency matters. All right. So once again, even though uh, all the uh, neighbors in the neighborhood, all the agents in the neighborhood want that public good, say park, um, you know, some people value more than the others. And on top of all that, uh, the, the, the park is going to cost us a lot. So the question is, the benefits versus cost. Is it really worth it building this uh, park? Is it efficient? So we're going to basically formalize what it means to be efficient uh, in, in the public good environment. All right. So this is it for this video. So in the next video, I'm going to describe our basic model. Uh, a public good model through an example. And then I'll talk about the reservation price. Very important, how we calculate and what it means. And then I'll talk about efficiency. Okay, coming up.